Hey folks, it's Ray at DCGamerica.com here, and today I've got your complete shootout test flight extravaganza thingamajig between the Mavic Air 2 and the Skydio 2. Now this video is not about the specs and all the features and all the other things, I'll get to that. I'll do like a complete deep dive into all the nuanced features between these two drones. This video, this is about pain and suffering. It's about crashing drones and trying to track me riding a bike uh, through some pretty challenging terrain in some cases. Not just terrain, but scenarios. Uh, the main thing I'm focused on here is filming oneself. I want to talk about filming just me, uh, which is probably appropriate given the current world climate. And now when it comes to the Mavic Air 2, there are three core things that DJI says have improved around actual tracking and the entire tracking scenario. Uh, number one is the underlying component of APAC which is the Advanced Pilot Assistance System, APAS. Uh, and it basically, that's the piece that goes ahead and it avoids all the things. Uh, so it avoids trees, and it knows where it came from, it avoids the train, and it was the ground, all that kind of stuff. That's been in DJI drones for a number of years, but they're saying in the Mavic Air 2 in particular, they've completely redone the whole thing from the ground up. Uh, and we'll get to that in just a second. The second piece they've done is they've gone ahead and they've dealt with how this drone reacquires objects or subjects after it's lost. Uh, so if you've had a DJI drone in the past, in particular pre-Mavic 2 drones, uh, you'll know that when it goes past a tree, if you're on the other side of the tree, it usually loses you and usually for good. Uh, with the Mavic 2 Zoom and Mavic 2 Pro, it got a bit better on that, but it was still, it still was a crapshoot whether it lose you. Uh, with this, they're saying that it should be a whole heck of a lot better. Don't worry, we're going to test that. Uh, and then finally, the last thing is that they're using the new APAS to build a 3D map of the world. So as it's flying through uh, this world, I guess you could say, uh, it's developing this map of objects that it should avoid and then figuring out how it can continue to track you using primarily the camera on the front uh, around these objects that it sees with these sensors, uh, which is probably a good time to talk about sensors. On the Mavic Air 2, there are sets of sensors in the front right there. Those are forward obstacle avoiding sensors. There are sets of sensors in the back right there. Those are rearward uh, obstacle avoiding sensors. And then there are sensors on the bottom right here primarily used for avoiding the ground, as well as detecting the height above the ground uh, for landing, for example. So the Mavic Air 2 lacks side sensors and it lacks a top sensor, uh, something that some of their other drones, for example, the Mavic 2 series does have. And that's particularly important as you fly upwards into trees. So if you're avoiding obstacles like this, you need to go around and then up above something, you wanna know it's above you so you don't plunk into that. Same goes for sideways flying, you wanna have sensors on the side there to avoid that. But there's tricks that this does to get around some of those things. When it comes to the Skydio 2, it has seven different sensing systems on it, uh, including six dedicated sensing cameras. One, two, three, then one, two, three, and then the front camera as well as used. Each of these cameras is all meshed together, creating basically this globe around it, this sphere around it, that it can see everything in every direction, uh, and then it also can see you and track you and knows that you are. And so with that, let's start talking about how I set up the test. Uh, I went out and I found a section of basically the end of a road and then onto a trail, uh, and I just repeated this for both of these. And so start off with both of them and they're both configured for 4K 30. Uh, and I know both of them support 4K 60, but the Mavic Air 2 does not actually support 4K 60 in the most advanced APAS mode. So I wanted to give it its best chance for avoiding hitting something. So I just set them both to 4K 30. Oh, hey, and a super quick note here. If you are finding this video interesting or useful or probably entertaining, uh, go ahead and just whack that like button at the bottom right there. It does help out this video and the channel quite a bit. The next thing there is then the control uh, now, in this case, you have to use this controller with the Mavic Air 2. Unlike the original Mavic Air, where you could use your phone to control it, uh, that isn't supported. There's no option for that anymore for Wi-Fi control on the Mavic Air 2, which is definitely a bit of a bummer. So I then had the controller here with my phone there plugged in. I took off the joysticks because it makes it a little bit easier uh, to stick in my bag. And then I put it in the kind of a top pocket of my bag that's really easily accessible. I can grab it really quickly if I wanted to. It's not kind of locked in there. On the Scadio 2, it just uses its sensors to detect me. Uh, my phone, I selected myself, and at that point, I'm, I'm off and running. So with that, let's start with the Mavic Air 2. We'll get out there, and uh, we'll get Active Track going and get going. Now, the way it works is I've got the controller here screen recording so you can see what's going on. Um, all I'm gonna do is simply go ahead and kind of get myself a bit more in the frame, but as long as I'm roughly in there, it's fine. And I'm gonna draw a square or rectangle around myself. So there we go, just like that. 
Uh, and now that gives you an option menu at the bottom. Now there's two kind of umbrella options, if you will. Uh, the first one is this left-hand option right there for trace or parallel. Trace means to stay behind uh, versus parallel means if actually kind of the same angle right now if I were to go this way. So it means stay off to my side in some way, shape or form. The other option here is to orbit around me uh, and you can change the direction there uh, as well. But I'm gonna go right now for the trace option to keep it behind and then down the road here, if we make it that far, then I'm gonna go for uh, the parallel option. So I think we've got the go selected, there we go. Uh, and now you'll see right there the stop option. I've got controller set up for easy access. I've taken the joysticks out of it, but I can still control it just fine. And I've got it up a little bit. I'm gonna go a little bit higher just for the fun of it there. So in case anything does go along here uh, from like a random unexpected vehicle or person standpoint, it's above them without any issues. And then we'll get rolling. I'm gonna go until something goes wrong, uh, which if it happens like last time, should be lots of fun. This is actually the second time Okay, so at this point, things are moving along pretty nicely. I know it can be a bit harder to hear the audio. Uh, I probably should have used other mics, and by probably, I mean definitely should have used other mics. Sorry about that. Um, however, what's notable is that it's a bit slow. Um, it hasn't lost me though yet, which is something that's pretty important here, but it is definitely slow. When I speed up, it doesn't really do a good job of catching up. And I know from doing this test a few times that if I sped up too fast, it simply will just lose me entirely. Still, it's worth noting that this is way better than the Mavic Air was. The Mavic Air could not do anything like this at all. Uh, from a tracking standpoint, these trees would have been really, really challenging for it, despite being open above it. Um, and even the DJI Mavic 2 would really have struggled in this particular area here, uh, just from a tracking standpoint. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit here to this churn that I have to make. Uh, now this piece here is really complex. There's lots of trees above me to the sides. It's basically like a dip down to my level, scoop around this, scoop around, I think a parked car there and a sign, uh, all that kind of stuff. And it nails it, like it's super impressive. This is something without question, the Mavic Air nor the DJI um, Mavic 2 could have done. Hands down, it would have definitely got caught on all that. Uh, so then I get out in this open field here, and now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fast forward again past all this. I wait for a couple cycles to go by. I saw them coming in the distance, so I just paused and waited a second. And it continued on, and now I'm gonna enter the trees. And this is something I wanted to see. This is a really tough, tough test to do if it can fall right behind me there. As you can see, it's handling this super, super well. Uh, now I will know on a previous attempt here, I did one other prior run to this one right here. Uh, I did get stuck at one point, mostly because I sped up and I got went a little bit too fast for it, which seemed to be closer to about 20 miles an hour or so, about 30K. Uh, then it went ahead and it dropped back too far because it was being too cautious in the trees. Uh, and then I had to go back to it, pedal back and it found me and it kept on going again. Uh, still, it's again, something that the other prior DJI drones could not have done without question. Okay, now at this point, what I wanted to do is demonstrate that profile view. Now the profile view is from the side. And so in this case, I'm gonna be going down the road and it's gonna be tracking from my side over the water, over the canal uh, with tree branches hanging out. It's a total recipe for disaster, which is exactly why I did it. Uh, so to set this up, you go to the exact same active track menu as before. In this case, you click on the same icon and then you click on the profile view. And then once that's done, you click on go and you start pedaling. Now you might notice right away, if you pay close attention to the speed, the drone is actually kind of speeding up and slowing down between each one of those trees. It's much more visibly obvious when you're looking at the drone from the outside. It's less obvious in the footage. You probably wouldn't even notice it if I didn't mention it to you. Uh, but the other thing you'll notice is it's set back from the side. It's not a true profile view. It's not directly off my left-hand side. Instead, it's set back sort of off my left backside. Uh, and the reason that it's probably doing that is to compensate for the lack of optical sensors on the sides of the drones. By going ahead and by going to the back a little bit, it can then angle the drone a little bit towards me so it still sees somewhat what it's doing in front of it, uh, which is a clever trick. As you can see, it's still hitting a lot of branches. And in fact, it gets stuck numerous times in branches and I had to come back and, and pick it up again. And I've kind of spliced this up a little bit to make it a little faster to watch. Uh, but you can see right here it gets stuck. I had to pedal back and fix it. And then it gets stuck again right here. I had to pedal back and fix it again. Uh, and then finally I get it to go through and it kerplunks yet another tree but keeps on going. So I think it hit three trees in total. But the important part here is it didn't die, it didn't go in the water. And in all three of those cases, up until this point anyways, um, it stayed in the air, which is great. Uh, now one quick note about the controller design and one of the downfalls that I discovered pretty quickly uh, is that the record button is right there. And when you put this in your bag, it's really, really easy to hit that button and not realize it. Uh, and so twice now, I went ahead and I hit that button. In fact, I'm pulled the exact same segments uh, where it stopped recording. The good news is I had a screen recording on at least one of them working, and that's what you're gonna see right here. At this point, I want you to listen carefully to the audio because this is 
probably the best part of the whole video, to be honest. So I clear the trees and I'm in this open field section. It's maybe 200 meters or so in length before I hit this gigantic tree. Uh, and now this tree is special to me because this is now the second run. And we're gonna talk about what happened on the first run once we talk about what happens on the second run. So listen carefully here. That sign right there in the distance. That's the thing it went a kerplunk really hard last time. So we're gonna see what happens this time. Here we go. I ask of you one thing, drone. Do not kerplunk the sign again. Oh, it went around it. And it lost me. To be fair, I asked for only one thing, not to hit the sign. For the record, that's the sign I hit last time. Full speed ahead, full tilt, straight into that huge ding. Here, let me replay that for you real quick. Okay, so you ready for that metal sign? I, well, so it's kind of a funny story. Remember that whole button pressing thing I talked about? Happened on the first time as well. And in fact, it happened also on the phone when I swiped over and so you don't actually see the impact, uh, but you hear the impact because I had the GoPro running and the screen recording running on this. Uh, so just listen carefully, watching this horrible GoPro angle at the ground or whatever it was pointed at, um, as to what happens next. Okay, so this is a much bigger tree. Much, much bigger tree. I'm gonna go with like whacking right into the side. Oh, shnikes, it actually hit it. See, that right there, that made the whole video worth watching. And frankly, the whole video worth recording. Uh, it's worthwhile noting that there is still some white from the sign on the edge of the drone right there. I'm not sure if it's the white from the paint or if it's the white from bird poop on the sign. So at this point, we've got the Mavic Air 2 all set. Let's jump over to the Scadio 2 and get that puppy in the air as well. Okay, so I've got the drone up in the air. Uh, tracking is super simple on the Scadio 2. All you do is once you got in the air, you simply go ahead and tap yourself or tap another moving object or object of some sort, and then it finds it. I'm gonna go ahead and raise the height just a little bit, just like I did with the uh, Mavic Air 2. So it's just above anything that may be unexpected coming my way. And then we're gonna roll, it's as simple as that. Give it a bit more range here, a little bit more like the, the Mavic 2 Air was. Okay, so after we get going at this point, I'm gonna cut the audio out because it's really bad this time around. Uh, and what you need to know is that there's nothing to know. Like this is classic Skydio 2 flying. It just flies long. I can change my speed as fast as I can pedal and it'll keep up just fine. I believe the limit's 34 miles per hour on this, which is as fast as I can do on flat ground anyways. Uh, obviously, if you're descending, that's a different story, but no issues here at all tracking. I can change the range to go further away from me or closer to me. I can change the angle, all using the phone on the fly. Uh, again, I could also use the beacon if I wanted to, but I didn't use the beacon for any of these test runs. I just kind of kept it nice and clean. Uh, now, what was interesting though, is that as I went up on this churn right here, the same churn that the Mavic Air 2 had no problems with, the Scadio 2 like failed. Like it didn't cross out of the sky, but it got caught. And you can see it tried to jump up around the, the trees as opposed to going under them for some reason. And it got itself in a pickle, it couldn't get out. Uh, that's actually the first time I've seen this really have trouble in any sort of easy scenario. I've, I've obviously put it in really, really tough scenarios and made it uh, made it hang there, but this is the first time it should have actually easily cleared this. Nonetheless, I got it back down on the ground and get cooking again um, across those fields. And this is where you can see some of the flexibility that you have on the Skydio 2 in terms of changing the angle and whatnot as you're flying along, uh, and also the speeds, because again, I'm able to go much faster here without any issues. Now I dive into the trees, uh, and this is where the Skydio 2 tries to get fancy. It tries to like overthink the scenario a bit. Uh, and it went ahead and went off the left-hand side of the trees, which is a cool angle. I don't disagree with that, but it's not the angle I wanted. Uh, and then it ultimately got itself stuck there. Uh, and I had to go back and fish it back out again, and it kept on going. Uh, now. This is an area that it's done this exact same set of trees numerous times without problems. Uh, at the same time, it's also got itself caught in almost that exact same spot six months ago, going the other direction, also trying to be fancy. Uh, so I think there's probably some room for improvement on Scadio in terms of when I tell it to stay behind me, just stay behind me. Don't, don't try to get fancy on me, just stay behind me. So 
Now it's time to get fancy. Now at this point, I turned around the exact same spot as I turned around with the Mavic Air 2, and I stuck it off the side of me. Now just look at how simple this was for me to stick it out to the side of me. I just made one quick tap on my phone. You can do the exact same thing with one quick tap on the beacon, and now it's out to the side. And now as I roll along, I'm going pretty darn quick. I'm going easily 10 miles an hour faster than the Mavic Air 2 uh, because it couldn't keep up with me at that point. Uh, and it's tracking beautifully out there. It's also a bit further out, uh, which is nice. So no issues in terms of trees or things like that, but it stuck itself out there. I didn't choose that. It put itself out there because that's where it wanted to be and it felt the safest. And honestly, that's the coolest looking shot. You get a bit more perspective on it uh, and it's pretty great. Now, we approach here the opening of the field, uh, and we cruise around this, and I'm just gonna let you go back to the audio uh, in all of its glory to see what happens next with the Skydio 2 in the same spot that the Mavic Air 2 kerplunked itself. In three, two, one. So we went around. Now at that point, I just kept on riding because I was kind of having fun. Uh, and I just let the Skydio 2 record as I went along and it didn't drop me again. I went up uh, this thing, I went underneath the bridge, I turned around again, went back down this thing and all, all over the place, it, it never lost me. I just had fun with it uh, just for the sake of, of flying until I could get back to uh, where I started from. So who is a winner at this point? Well, it depends. If you're looking at durability, this baby's got it. Uh, this thing, I mean, it crashed twice, one, I mean, you heard that ding. I mean, just hear the ding again. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. You heard the ding, that's impressive. And then there was a tree branch scenario. Uh, but if the goal was not to crash, well, this sort of did that. It, it did it quite well, in fact. Um, except the problem is neither drone was perfect. They both screwed up in some way, shape, or form. Still, I've gotta be impressed with the Mavic Air 2 in terms of the tracking overall. Um, this is by far the best tracking I've seen from a DJI product. Uh, now, I wouldn't say it's the best obstacle avoidance. And I think there's a, a definite difference there, in part because it doesn't have those optical sensors. I think DJI and their quest for ultimately trying to sell you more expensive drone uh, cheaped out on the things that would have made this an incredible drone. If they had had another sensor on top and then one or sorry, two on the sides, that would have been epic. That would have kept those crashes from happening, unquestionably. It would have kept the trees from happening, uh, the tops of the tree buzzing thing that you saw there. Uh, it would have been perfect. So for me, it's challenging. Like I will probably bring this uh, for vacation these type stuff, but if I'm climbing the Alps for like five hours, like going up a Stelvio or something like that, I don't really wanna bring all this stuff with me. That's a lot of stuff. I mean, uh, yes, this folds up way better, no doubt about it than the Skydio 2 does, um, but I've got to bring both of these things now. That's kind of a bummer. Um, this I had to put in a backpack, so maybe I'm just gonna stick in a backpack anyways. I don't know, there's no good answer there. But there probably will be a good video that I'll do to put together and talk about the difference between those two more from a complete feature standpoint once it stops raining out, but hopefully soon. So if you want to see that video, hit the subscribe button there. If you've got some other video you want to see related to these two things, just put it in the comments down below. I'll, I'll try to make it. Uh, whether it's the AK functionality this or something else, uh, let me know and I will dig into it and figure out how it works. With that, thanks for watching. Hope you have a good one and enjoy.